Welcome and hello. This is a, a video lesson on the HECRAS controller. This is an introduction lesson. The HECRAS controller is one of the most powerful yet relatively unknown features available in HECRAS. This tool allows you to control HECRAS from an external program and automate various tasks such as opening and closing the projects, setting plans and geometry, running simulations, extracting results, and automating tasks. This is the first video in the playlist for HECRAS controller. And at the outset, I'm already assuming that you have a certain level of familiarity with both HECRAS and Microsoft Excel, a Visual Basic for applications. So if you don't, that's fine, but go ahead and check out the description in this video where I'm going to link the playlist for my HECRAS lessons, where the very first lesson is how to download and install HECRAS. And then after that, there's a number of lessons. Specifically, what you're going to want to know for the HECRAS controller is to understand how to perform modeling in 1D. You're also going to need Microsoft Excel, and we're going to get started with a demonstration and a little bit later. But the first half of this lecture, this particular video, is a little bit more informational. Towards the end, we'll do a quick demo and hopefully pique your interest in this very cool looking tool, the HECRAS controller. By the way, there's no online documentation that I could find for the HECRAS controller. I'm using this, this book right here called the Breaking the HECRAS Code. So what I've learned from that, I'm going to pick out some of the highlights and make some lesson videos and some exercise videos. And I'll leave a link to that particular book in the description of this video as well. Few reasons you may want to learn the HECRAS controller is to automate dozens or hundreds of simulations, integrate HECRAS with other models, and create custom output only capturing the data that you need in a format that you prefer. Some of the limitations, as I currently understand them for the HECRAS controller, is that the HECRAS controller is usable by any programming language that can call a dynamic link library or DLL, which is the main method of libraries shared on a Windows operating system. So if you're using a Mac or a Linux computer, I do not believe there is a equivalent at this time. Also, from what I understand, the HECRAS controller works on 1D HECRAS models. As far as 2D models, I'm not exactly sure how applicable it is. Right. Let's go ahead and get started. What I have on the screen here is a simple 1D HECRAS model. I'm not going to be touching the HECRAS model for this particular video, but I just wanted to bring it up so you know what we're talking about. What I am going to be doing is talk about Microsoft Excel. So bring up a Microsoft Excel file, create one if you need to. And I'm also saving this as a .xlsm file. So if you want to go file, save as, select the file extension, not as what you'd probably be prompted to save it as .xlsx, but rather .xlsm, which is this one right here. Okay, so that's the first thing to do. And then after that, what you want to do is click on this developer tab up on the top. It'll bring up your developer ribbon. If you don't see the developer tab, that's fine. What you want to do to show the developer tab is go to the file menu, come down here to options at the bottom, and then click on customize ribbon over on the left panel. And then in this right list box, you want to check on developer. If it's not already checked on, go ahead and check that on and then click on OK. So that should bring up your developer tab. There's a lot to talk about in this developer tab, and I'm not going to talk about it all in this video. But the one button I am going to talk about is this far left button, Visual Basic. So if you go ahead and click that, that'll bring up your Visual Basic for Applications dialog box where you have all of your code saved for the worksheet, the workbook, and any uh, external modules that you happen to add. Also, if you want to just quickly go back to your main Excel view. You can click this Excel button right here. It takes you back to Excel. So you can very easily click on Visual Basic and then Excel, and then just keep toggling back between the two different views. So the last thing I want to do in this lesson is show you how to create the reference to your HECRAS from the VBA applications window here. So to that, click on the Tools menu, click on References, and then in the dialog box, you're going to want to scroll down to where it says HEC RAS controller or HEC river. Let's see, this is alphabetized. Okay, so here it is. 
HEC River Analysis System. Now I happen to have four separate versions of RAS installed on my computer. So whichever version you have, you should see the version right down here in the path. So I have 6.3.1, that's not what I wanna use, 6.7 beta. 6.6 .6 is the version that I wanna use. So I'm gonna click on the checkbox for that particular HEC River Analysis System and then go ahead and click OK. So to confirm that that was actually selected, you can just go back to Tools, References, and then sure enough, we have the Heck River Analysis System checked right here for our references in VBA. Click OK. And if you're curious what classes are involved in that reference, then you can click on the View menu and then click on Object Browser. And then from this drop down right here, instead of all libraries, click on RAS 6.6 or whichever version that you selected. So you have to have RAS installed on your computer if you want to include the reference. And then here are the different classes. This one right here, HEC RAS controller, is the primary class that we're going to be using. There are a couple others here, like flow and geometry. Flow, I believe, was somewhat abandoned. And then geometry, I read, was all included in the main HEC RAS controller anyway. So what you see here is a list of different methods and events. The methods are sometimes called procedures in VBA. So I'll try to use that terminology. But uh, anyway, I'm getting a little bit too detailed here. I'm just going to go ahead and close that by clicking on the X in the top right corner. Not this one, the smaller one. And to finish things off here for this introduction lesson, let's go ahead and write a quick subroutine to open up our HECRAS project. So control shift escape brings up the task manager. Right now you can see I do have HECRAS running as an application. So I'm just going to right click and end that task. So that closed my HECRAS. But when we open HECRAS through the controller, it's gonna show up as a background process down here. So let me just scroll down. All right, so in my background processes, HEC would be between ExpressVPN and host process for Windows tasks, whatever that is. Uh, I don't have it running currently, but that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna minimize my task manager. I'm going to double click on my sheet one worksheet and then paste in a subroutine. I'll explain this in a little bit more detail in future lessons, but just kind of roll with me for now. Here is that HECRAS controller class that we can now reference because it's included. RC is the name of the object. And we're also going to instantiate a string called str file name, which is going to take the path to our .prj HECRAS project. The last line in this code is to open. So rc.project open. That's the procedure that's associated with this class. And then we're going to pass it an argument, which is str file name to open up our HECRAS project. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is save it and then run it. And that's all that should be required to actually open up our project. I'm gonna open up the task manager now. And sure enough, HECRAS 6.6 .6 is running as a background process. I realize that it's not very satisfying. There's a lot more to HECRAS controller, but that's all I want to say for a short and sweet introduction lesson on the HECRAS controller.